Um, I'd like to call to order the 11th regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Saying hello, good morning, or any kind word will not cause brain damage. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next is the roll call. There are 13 present. Um, Alderperson Schneider, Bitters, and uh, Donahue are all excused. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to public forum. City Clerk. There's no one this evening. Thank you. Uh, item 1.5 is a presentation, which is an update on activities and peer safety video of the Water Safety Task Force. Uh, Joe Curlin, our Superintendent of Parks and Forestry, and Marina is, is here to uh, give us an update. Joe, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just got um, Chad and I, Chad put together a small PowerPoint for tonight. Um, just uh, we, we, we did some recent updates to the, the peers and we've been working on those for the, over a year now and um, I was just asked to give a little presentation so we can go to the next screen. Okay, so um, one recommendation of the Lakefront Water Safety Group in 2017 uh, was to install cautionary uh, gates. Um, one, one picture I don't have what we did last year right away is, is put signage up. Now this, this is the first signage you would see along Lake Michigan at all. We actually had the Army Corps of Engineer um, on our group, um, several, several members on our group, but they were working on the time, at this time, they were working on putting a, a signage together, better signage to go up to all the communities that had peers. And um, we were able to get that right away in our sign shop at Public Works. Um, actually des designed ways to, to incorporate it all and get it all on two posts. And they, they loved it so much once they seen it, and we got those in right away last year. They loved it so much once they seen it, they asked if we would make those signs for them. So they just picked them up um, last week, and they were able to see some other things we did, and, and they said, we, we just gotta show everybody this. So um, we've been doing a good job with, with really promoting that peer safety. Um, the other part you'll see is, in, in just a bit, is swinging gates. And the gates were actually made by in-house, um, by the Parks Department lead man, Land Melbrook. Um, he put the whole system together, welded um, what we needed and how to put them together. And I'll explain more when we look at them. Uh, Sheboygan Police Department, um, the process now, it's kind of the same process when we started using the, the, the barricades, but um, the Coast Guard, will call in to dispatch. They tell them we rec make a recommendation that you close the piers, you know, usually when the water's coming over. Even if the pier's wet, it can be dangerous. And um, dispatch then calls the police department. Now the police department can just send someone out. They have the keys needed. They unlock the gate, open it, lock it in, in place. And then when it's all clear, they'll just do the same thing but backwards. So. Uh, so these gates, once you see them, they're not designed to close off the pier completely. Okay, there may be people out there. Um, we, we did a lot of talk about this. We talked with the Army Corps, we talked with the city attorney, a lot of in-house talk. Our goal was to put something out in front of people to say, hey, you know, this is not safe. We're not officially saying it's closed, but we really don't want people out there. So, next. So these are the pictures of, of uh, South Pier and uh, North Pier. So as you can see, we have the ring buoy right there at uh, South Pier, but that gate, again, it's, it's only about five feet long. And right now it's in the, it's in the open position. So you're, you're walking by, you're re really not noticing it. But now 
when conditions are bad, that gets turned out, locked in place, and it's right there, boom, in front of you. So we have that along with the signage that you can't see in this picture. So it's really jumping out of people saying, hey, this unsafe conditions, just be careful or don't go out there at this time. And then the same at North Pier. Next, please. As part of this group, uh, another thing that came about was um, um, you'll, you'll, we have new signage coming, brand new signage, uh, no one has yet. Um, it's, it's through the Water Safety Consortium through Great Lakes. Um, they put on a, a, a big training session in, actually in Sheboygan this year as a great way to learn. But um, you'll notice if, if you can think of the land park and you see the picture to the right, that pier right there, you got the currents coming in from North Point going along the beach and shooting out our pier. That's a very dangerous area. And actually, uh, Larry Williams, who's bringing surfing to uh, Sheboygan, was the first one to kind of really get that out there, that we really need to, start, need to start watching that and try to do something. So as we're waiting for those specific signs to come, and we'll see those for later, we have these three signs about 90 feet out. One was taken in by the waves because the waves got so high, but um, for the season, we'll get them out again. And it just, you don't even want to be swimming in that area. Something I never knew. I'm not, not familiar with the, you know, the currents of Lake Michigan. And, and uh, unfortunately, there was an event where this year, um, a girl, 14-year-old girl, was saved by, by two, uh, three parents that just happened to be in the, there at the right time. Thank goodness. Um, but exactly what the warning is about, the current goes, and it acts like a rib current, it shoots out along that structure, and she got caught in that. And thank goodness she could scream. And um, uh, three three adults reacted and were able to get her to safety. So next, that's that's right there. It explains we're going to have uh, three of those and, and a no swim area, and that's exactly what can happen. You want to stay away from those pier structures when swimming. Next. Um, the next thing, the city worked with Ron Hayes. Uh, he's an instructor for Lakeshore Technical College to develop short commercials and public service announcements about the unsafe condition of piers during high waves. Uh, right now, so this just got out um, towards the end of summer here, the video's on YouTube at the Chamber Lobby, at WSCS, and uh, closed loop TVs in the hotel. That's one thing we really wanted to get out to the hotels. The big thing was how do we reach people that don't understand Lake Michigan, and that's the people coming to visit our community. And I think that was one of the biggest things we uh, could do to try to try to get a hold of those people. So um, we are actually going to show um, one of those commercials at this time. Sheboygan Waterfront's a beautiful area. There are structures that are there for navigation, and they have created a, a, an amazing place for people to go out and walk onto. But they are for navigation, not made for people to walk on. One of the main concerns is being washed off of these structures and these piers. There's large waves that come over the pier unexpectedly when the weather changes, and, and most people don't realize that the weather might change in, in a short amount of time. Being out on these piers and structures, I think most people don't take it. So we made 
over the course of the year have, have helped to have a, um, um, a no drowning season. Um, it was reported to me this week that Lake Michigan had 33 drownings um, this year. Uh, so we're happy at this time that uh, none, of them, none of them are in, in Sheboygan here. Um, the story I told you about was a, a story told to the mayor by email about a couple, couple that are from Illinois and they were traveling through Sheboygan, love Sheboygan, always take the opportunity to stop at the beaches with their kid. Uh, their kids, and she told a, a very um, story ended well, but a scary story of, of, of what could happen uh, along those structural currents. So we are really appreciative she did that so we know these things, so we can document those things. And um, the other thing we've been doing a lot, and if you're social media at all, you've seen it. You've seen it on Twitter, you've seen it through the police department, you've, you've seen it um, about everywhere. Um, basically, beach hazard, hazards, closings, things like that have been out and about um, all through those. Um, and then we feel right now we've really built upon. We've got some smaller things, more signage, things like that that we're working on. Um, but education, we believe, is, is, is probably the biggest thing we can do at this point. And we are, as a committee, going to continue to, to meet and, and grow this. But at this time, um, I'd like to introduce Jason Dreyer. Jason is the officer command at the Coast Guard office in Sheboygan. Um, one of the, the nicest things for me um, for having this committee is I got to know a lot of the city departments. I have got to know the county. I have got to know the Army Corps of Engineers. But um, this person right here that's just at our commercial, Jason Dreyer, um, I thought they were a little chained off community where you just don't touch, but he is so receptive to bring people in and being, be part of the community. His family goes to school here, his kids, and, and uh, he's been great to know and great to um, have um, as an asset to, to our community here and for our committee. But Jason Dreyer, I'd like to see if you'd like to say a few words. Thanks, Joe, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me to, here tonight. Uh, it is important for me to be part of the community and do what I can. I know it gets lost sometimes that, like Joe said, on both sides of the fence where we're just this little federal Coast Guard that sits here and we do our own thing and the community does their own thing, but for me it's important. We live here, we, we you know, our kids go to school here and we're part of the community, so I'm, I'm here to do whatever I can. I've worked with all the first responders. I've met with all of them to see how we can better work together with our relationships and it's been great. And I, I enjoy being here, and I enjoy being part of these these committees and meetings, and I enjoy this com this community. So I'm here to help. If there's anything you, that comes up in the in the meetings or anything, I'm I'm here. Just give me a call, and I'll do what I can. Does anybody have anything for me, or yeah, any questions for either one? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, obviously, you know, for us alders, this is a great ex example of how. There was a, a cry for a need. We take advantage, you know, we take it for granted. We live on Lake Michigan. You know, so many of us have been um, born right here in Sheboygan with the lake, and we take it for granted that we don't understand some of the safety hazards and the things, you know, like you brought up before, swimming along the pier and things like that, or just walking on the pier. Like you said in the video, it's not meant for walking on. It's a, it's a path to a structure. But we take it for granted, and when a tragedy happens, there's an outcry, and we, we wonder what's going on. So I think this is a perfect example of how the community gets together, a team of people get together, a solution is, def is defined, and we come up with a win-win where even the, uh, you know, we were even complimented on being a ahead of the game, correct me if I'm wrong. So, you know, compliment and, you know, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, my compliments to the committee that <clears throat> I had many meetings uh, to determine some of the measures that should be taken, and uh, we appreciate your time and effort, and it's good to see positive results. Uh, we have a double feature tonight, and next we have a presentation of the 2018 executive budget by Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Uh, thank you, Mayor. 
Uh, I don't know if I've ever been introduced as part of a double feature from before, <laughs> but uh, I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, in front of you tonight, uh, we've distributed a binder of 477 pages. Um, hopefully, any question that you would have, hopefully we've been able to anticipate that and put it together uh, into the document. Uh, and again, the goal is for you as decision makers to have uh, a comprehensive understanding as to, um, as to the numbers, uh, as to the activity associated with the different budgets, um, and ultimately how this document fulfills some of the strategic goals uh, that many of you approved uh, back in January of 2017. Uh, Again, uh, earlier this year, a budget calendar, budget review and approval calendar was distributed. Um, I know that you will begin in earnest uh, as early as this week, a meeting with uh, your department heads at, on a committee, commission, or, or board level. Uh, ultimately, those reviews should uh, wind up or wind down by October 16th, uh, where a public hearing will be held uh, in this room, and the earliest you would be able to consider action on the 2018 budget would be your first council meeting in the month of November, November 6. As I alluded to earlier, uh, this budget uh, closely follows uh, the strategic plan as you approved, uh, again, the 2017 to 2021 strategic plan. Uh, each of the 93 program budgets uh, have a mission, uh, have a purpose, uh, have a description, they identify any budget highlights, uh, they identify staffing if appropriate, uh, objectives are identified, and then performance analytics. Uh, next slide. Uh, city does have a mission statement. I won't read it for you. Uh, the city also has a vision statement. Key things that are taken in consideration in developing the budget uh, are uh, state law restrictions uh, such as tax levy limits. Also, the budget parameters were discussed with the uh, Finance and Personnel Committee, uh, my recollection, in April, ultimately uh, approved by the Common Council, which is compliance with the Expenditure Restraint Program, uh, an equalized tax rate at consumer price index or lower, and, main, and maintain uh, a minimum fund balance in the general fund of 25%. For the tax levy limit, uh, the this, this city is allowed to grow its levies every year by the amount of uh, net new construction. Uh, the city had a, a great construction year for 2016. So as the 1-1-2017 valuation, again, a lot of new tax base uh, construction specifically occurred in 2016. If the city increases, has any increase in it, its expenses associated with debt service, the city is also allowed to raise its uh, levy uh, by that new debt service need. All in all, I'm recommending a tax levy increase of 5.3%. The other item I mentioned that the city uh, has participated in, and, and my recommendation is that we continue it, and that is the expenditure restraint program. This is a state program which recognizes communities and provides a financial reward to communities that keep their budget uh, below uh, inflation and a small allowance is given for uh, net new construction in the community. Uh, 1.57 is our guess. At, uh, we do not receive a final percent from the state until probably toward the end of October. So this is the one last piece of information. Typically we do receive it uh, prior to your November uh, approval, and as a result, oftentimes there's really a last minute, the 11th hour adjustment for us to be able to maximize, um, maximize the potential spending plan, uh, even if it's putting additional money in contingency just so you protect uh, your abilities for future years as far as uh, being able to capture capacity uh, for, for future year's budgeting. Uh, next slide identifies that the uh, CPI at this point is, is 0.64 percent. Uh, on an equalized tax rate, our goal is to come in at or under that consumer price index. 
For equalized tax rate, I'm recommending actually a negative number, a negative 1.56. The 0.64 uh, is lower than last year's inflation. I think the lowest in 10-year period was actually in 2016. It was 0.3. Uh, we will not know this consumer price index again for roughly a month. Uh, next slide identifies the assessed tax rate. Again, as many of you are aware, there is an equalized tax rate and an assessed tax rate. The equalized tax rate takes in consideration a possible change in the, in the economic or market value of a property. As we know, after the Great Recession, uh, many properties went down in value. Uh, in fact, uh, good news I shared with you earlier is that for the first time since 2008, uh, on average, residential property in the city of Sheboygan appreciated. Uh, almost 6%, uh, where up until uh, two years ago, it had steadily declined. Last year, it held steady, or two years ago, it held steady, and this last year um, was roughly a 6% increase. Again, this assessed tax rate is only a guess. We won't receive information until the very end of our your deliberation, the, the end of October. On the assessed tax rate, uh, it's expected, uh, the assessed tax rate is expected to go up 19 cents per thousand. So on a $100,000 property, whether it's residential, commercial, or industrial, $100,000 value, $19 is what the recommended increase will be. And again, uh, we'll know better what that equalized to assessment ratio is in the, toward the end of October. Uh, next slide identifies fund balance. Again, the goal is to maintain in the general fund at least 25%. Um, with the decisions uh, as a group by the management team, uh, we will be at 49% as opposed to 25%. And that's even after the planned use of, of 2.5 million to, to partially fund phase one of city hall renovations. Uh, without the city hall renovations, uh, this fund balance would be at 56%, again, compared to the goal of no less than 25%. Uh, the chart identifies uh, the, the purple line in the front, or purple boxes in the front identify that 25%. The gray boxes in the back identify where the city's been for the last four <coughs> years. In the general fund, even with the proposed use of $2.5 million for city hall renovation, uh, we, in essence, have $8.8 .8 in excess of that 25% minimum amount. The next slide, unfortunately, has a lot of information. It's a very small font. Uh, in your budget book, it's page 51. It's what I consider really one of the key uh, pages in the budget document. It, it identifies the, the, the details of your fund categories, uh, which actually are on the, the subsequent pages 52 and 53. Uh, it identifies a uh, $12.3 million proposed increase. And again, many of, these, uh, many of the projects that are the, the source for this $12.3 million increase are capital projects or capital equipment, all of which were presented to you earlier and which was approved by the Common Council, I think, in, in, uh, in May or late May. 12.2% uh, are 12.2 million is the reason for the 12.3 the million increase. Uh, and again, these are all in the capital improvement fund. Next slide discusses or depicts the property tax levy. You can see on the 2017 levy, um, looking at the bars, uh, red is the general fund, which is the largest amount of where the levy is assigned. Teal is a capital projects fund and purple is the debt fund. Uh, the general fund is actually going down by 1.5, and what I'm recommending is more funds, more of the levy be assigned directly to the capital projects fund, roughly 2.3 million. Uh, there is some additional, in, uh, additional levy that's going to the debt fund, debt service fund, and again, this is associated with, as I alluded to earlier, the state allows us to increase our levy if we see that our debt service is, is increasing. The next slide identifies who's paying that increase in tax levy. So of the roughly 1.2 million, uh, new construction is paying a, a far majority, so 864,000. 
uh, that roughly 19 cent per thousand increase uh, roughly earns the city 310,000 and that's in essence borne by existing property taxpayers. So 1.2 is the uh, recommended increase in the tax levy. Uh, next slide identifies the personnel changes. Uh, again, really limited changes from 17 to 18. Uh, expansion or addition of a .19 deputy city clerk, also a .4 assistant city attorney, level two. Uh, elimination or reduction of the following positions, a .20 ass uh, assistant city attorney, so taking a full time, dropping it to 80% or a reduction of .2. In the 2017 budget, uh, uh, there was a recommendation, you supported it to uh, put, add to our personnel schedule an additional officer. That's, it, this officer is not listed on the above uh, slide. Uh, it was tied to a federal grant. Unfortunately, we didn't receive the grant. We're not expected to receive the grant in future applications. And so as a result, I, I did not fund that uh, additional officer in the 2018 budget. Also in the 2018 budget is the continuation of uh, positions that were created in calendar year 2017 such as a public works clerk, uh, as well as a battalion chief that started July 1st. Uh, overall, the uh, FTEs, the full-time equivalent positions, uh, recommended in this budget for 2018 is slightly lower than the 2017 approved. Uh, it's a 0.61 FTE reduction. Uh, and again, the details are in the appendix of, of your doc budget document. On to the general fund discussion. Uh, general fund in this, in this pie chart, property taxes and intergovernmental revenues, 40% and 41% respectively, uh, add up to 81%. So 81% of the general fund revenues are uh, tied to those two pieces of the pie. Next slide identifies the detail. Um, I think it's helpful for you to see from one year to another how, how the revenues compare. You'll see that as far as a slice of the pie, other than property taxes, which I mentioned before, we're <coughs> directly assigning additional property tax levy to the capital projects fund associated with the city hall renovation. Um, and so that's why there's a difference in property tax levy uh, from one year to another. Next slide. Um, again, we mentioned the property tax levy, roughly $1.5 million drop, and then we're using uh, some fund balance to, in essence, make up the difference. Uh, in order to fund general fund uh, expenditures. Next slide is a pie chart for the expenditures between the green and the red, green being public works, red being public safety, uh, 23 and 56% respectively, uh, is 79% of our overall general fund, which is our operating budget, 79% uh, are just in those two category, categories. Again, the next slide gives you the, ver is the detail for the different uh, sections of the general fund, uh, overall, a 1.22% one, 1 increase in overall expenditure level. So uh, less than a half a, million dollar, half a million dollar increase in the general fund, which is our largest fund uh, of all. Major changes is the next slide, SCEDC funding, uh, cutting another 25,000 out of the general fund. We're trying to find another way to fund uh, SCEDC. Uh, uh, specifically uh, some of our new TIF districts. Election, we're going from two in 2017 to four, estimated four in 2018, 62,000 and change increase. Again, that battalion chief that was hired in, in July of this year, we have to fund now 12 months instead of, instead of just six months, so it's an additional 50, roughly 58,000. A controller position was eliminated in the finance department, so savings of roughly 77,000. Street reconstruction materials, I'm recommending a decrease of roughly 319,000, but in essence, I'm directly funding that expense in the capital projects. So the money is there, it's just not in this fund, it's in the capital projects fund. And then the wage adjustment reserve, as many of you are aware, we have four unions, uh, two police, one fire, one transit. None of those are settled for 2018. No settlement in wages have, have been, that decision has not been made for non-represented so instead of guessing what that percent or what that dollar amount is and putting them in all the different fund budgets, uh, in essence, we have all that money in essence in this pot wage adjustment reserve. So as you approve contracts or approve 
uh, cost of living for non-represented, then we will reallocate out of this account into the individual program budgets. Uh, next slide uh, starts uh, to discuss some of our other funds um, for 2018, our Park Forestry and Open Space Fund. This was new in 2017, uh, recommending 87,500 for trees. They're roughly $300 a tree, uh, so we get 291 trees. Uh, splash pad at Optimus Park. Next slide. Uh, as many of you are aware, uh, the commitment by the federal government to continue funding uh, block grant uh, is up in the air. Um, typically, the block grant fiscal year is April to March, uh, so we're good to go between now and next end of next March, uh, but we don't know uh, what's going to happen the next fiscal year of this program. So we're recommending we're trying to be conservative and recommend a 50% decrease. So that means a $467,000 potential decrease in our calendar year 2018. Uh, as a result, other cuts, uh, public service uh, contributions to nonprofits decreased 70,000 and change. Uh, one project that is recommended that we fund with this, with these block grant money, uh, is a band shelter. This was identified in the five-year cap improvement. Uh, I think it was identified possibly in 2020. So, uh, between Chad uh, Palaszczuk and uh, Dave Beeble, recommend is recommendation is to move that up. This would be phase one of roughly a half a million dollar project. Uh, park impact fee fund, this is a brand new fund for the city, uh, created in 2017, uh, 40,000 overall costs. And again, um, uh, Joe is recommending uh, that we uh, put in additional ADA related walkways in, in the four parks that are identified on this slide. Mead uh, public library fund is the next slide. Uh, for the first time in five years, uh, I, there's a recommendation I'm recommending that there be a, an increase. Uh, so over, uh, and it's only a 1.3% increase overall in the city's contribution to help fund the Mead Public Library, uh, as I mentioned, first time in five years. Uh, ambulance fund, again, mostly due to a drop in the reimbursement rate by the federal government. Uh, uh, again, trying to be conservative. Uh, revenues are expected to decrease roughly 200,000 next year. Uh, and as a result, we have less money to transfer into the general fund. Uh, and, and after all the numbers are added and subtracted, uh, roughly 233,000 and change decrease in the amount of sort of net, net proceeds from this fund to help us uh, underwrite costs associated with our general fund operations. Harbor Center Marina Fund, uh, the good news is uh, based upon, you know, again, commitment, financial commitment by the Common Council in years past, we think uh, we have a lot of the projects completed, and uh, as a result, our, our capital costs uh, are decreasing. We, uh, with the proposed budget, uh, my goal is that the Marina Fund is going to be self-supporting. So no additional subsidies from other funds will be needed in 2018. Uh, for reference, uh, in 2017, I identify that uh, Con Convention Center Fund transferred roughly $476,000 to help balance its, its budget. One project that is scheduled for 2018 is to eliminate everyone having keys and go to an electronic FOB program, $40,000. Next slide gets into the debt service fund. Again, this is one of our major funds. The amount of taxes needed to fund the debt service uh, is increasing by four cents per thousand. And you see what the 17 rate was, the 16 rate, uh, so, we're, so we're somewhere in that middle uh, dollar twenties uh, to fund our debt service. As far as capacity, uh, we're roughly 20% uh, of our state, uh, our statutory capacity. Uh, again, with our tax base increase uh, due to new construction and our appreciation of existing properties, it helps uh, drop uh, that, that statutory percent. Um, this 20.5% uh, includes um, a planned uh, new issue of general obligations debt of roughly 10.25 million. This, is, this fund also assumes that, there, uh, that as a common council, you do not continue to special assess for street projects. So I've not included any funds, any revenues associated with special assessments. Next slide uh, shows the net outstanding debt 
uh, 39 million. And again, it comes out to be 20.5%. Uh, so we are, the, the goal as a city, you've approved a debt management policy to be no higher than 60%. So you can see that we are roughly 40% below the target. Capital projects is the next fund. Uh, again, um, sizable amount of vehicle registration fees will continue. Our portion of the sales tax um, will come, come our way for transportation purposes. Uh, federal grant, this is basically uh, a project that we thought we were gonna get grant money in 17. We're rescheduling it for 18. This is associated with funding for Evergreen Park Bridge. You see other projects. Uh, again, there's two locations for uh, city hall renovation. Uh, this is one of the funds, 2.5. Uh, companion uh, recommendation is 5 million in the capital improvement fund. So again, typically the two funds, capital projects, we pay cash for everything. In the capital improvement fund, that's where borrowed funds occur. This is for phase two the, with the expectation <coughs> the renovation will occur in 2018 and be completed in 2019. Boots and Sports Complex is substantially uh, donations uh, with limited uh, city taxpayer funding. Uh, Wildwood Baseball Complex, the same situation. We may oversee the project. Uh, almost all of that million is, is uh, donations. I mentioned the bridge, Washington Avenue between 20th uh, Street and Lakeshore, roughly 1.2 million. In order to ac accomplish uh, our street projects, uh, we're going to need roughly $5.2 million, which is uh, the next slide. Uh, cooling towers, fire station renovation, fire station number one renovation, uh, Quint ladder engine, five buses. Uh, again, I mentioned the city hall renovation just one slide ago. Miscellaneous streets, uh, real quickly I'll run through them. North 3rd Street between Broughton and Bluff. North 7th between Erie and Superior, North 13th Street between Erie and Michigan, North 17th between Erie and Seaman. Uh, other capital projects on the next slide. Uh, purchase of land, I know you've already made a commitment for over $2 million, which will close next year. So the funding associated, the accounting associated with that will occur in the 2018 budget, as well as other possible land for an expansion of the Grafton Business Center. Uh, purchase of right of way, uh, Former railroad tracks uh, north of Indiana running parallel to Indiana Avenue, expected to be a little over a million dollars in a new TID. TID 16, Halperin Fountain Plaza improvements, uh, roughly a quarter of a million dollars. 1.5 for Taylor Drive between uh, Kohler Memorial and Erie. Again, this is associated with the uh, demolition of Ma uh, Memorial Mall and, and the construction of, of the Meyer food store. Last but not least is Concord Drive storm water uh, pipe ex extension, and again, this is associated with the FedEx uh, distribution center. Other uh, smaller funds, uh, no changes, a workers' compensation fund, liability insurance fund, health insurance fund, as many of you are aware, at the last finance and personnel committee, there was a recommendation uh, for both the employer and the employee portion of health insurance to increase by 10%. This will raise an additional roughly $900,000. Also, a uh, uh, recommendation for the city to reduce our HSA contribution by 20%, which will save the fund roughly $78,000. A wastewater utility fund, a recommendation for an 8% revenue increase in addition to city of Sheboygan customers uh, being served by our wastewater treatment plant, uh, Sheboygan Falls, Kohler, the town of Sheboygan, town of Wilson, town of she uh, Sheboygan Falls, and the town of uh, Lima. Switchgear project uh, design, actually that was uh, this year. Uh, the project will, uh, will occur uh, next year. Um, it's, it's uh, I think roughly three million. I forgot to update this slide. And then a pump, uh, pump expense increase. Parking and transit funds, the next slide, no material change. Boat facility fund, uh, 23 docks on the wharf side for roughly $400,000. Last slide is, again, full copies of this document um, are available at the Mead Public Library, uh, at the City Clerk's Office here at City Hall. Uh, on lot, this is gonna be posted online in the next day or two. Uh, we do have uh, roughly an 18-page budget and brief. Uh, again, hard copies will be made available here at City Hall, uh, Mead Public Library, and the Senior Activity Center. 
and later this week, uh, City Desk uh, Mayor Vanderstein and myself will tape uh, a program to again go over many of the things that we've discussed today. So that should be available on the uh, cable channel or on demand through our city website. I look forward to discussing this with you uh, as well as the department heads look to uh, tell you uh, all about their requests for 2018. Thank you very much. I'd like to commend uh, Administrator Huffland, our Finance Director Nancy Buss, and their Assistant Carrie Arentz for all the work that they did to pull this together, and also all of our department heads for uh, the work they did on their own individual budgets. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's announcements. I just want to remind everybody that this Saturday from noon to 5 at Fountain Park will be a, a festival called Come Together, a festival celebrating unity in our community. And uh, there will be entertainment and food trucks there. And at this time, I'd like to call forward uh, former alderperson uh, Bill Thiel and uh, Fire Chief Mike Romas. Uh, I had a, the privilege of going down to Walmart uh, this morning. They were kicking off some new product that, uh, that they're offering their uh, clients and customers. And we also had a presentation of a very important check for the fire department. Bill, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Hey, maybe it's like a triple feature. <laughs> came back. We'll call it that anyways. Um, yeah, this morning we had an opportunity to uh, kick off a new program called Online Grocery Pickup. And with that, um, we wanted to celebrate some of the contributions we made to the community. And one of the contributions we made was to the uh, City of Sheboygan Fire Department. I am very well versed on budgets and how much money, you know, the city could use. And I called up Chief Romus and I said we had some dollars that we'd like to, you know, give out. And, and he had a project that he, he knew something that he was looking for. I'll let him explain that. But uh, we're, us at Walmart, we want to give back to the community. And this was our opportunity to do that with the city of Sheboygan, with one of them. So this morning we presented him with a check for $2,400 um, at our program this morning. <laughs> you want to tell him what the dollars are going to be used for? It's um, serendipity that we were talking about water safety, but in my budget, I didn't have enough money to purchase ice rescue suits for water rescue, water safety. And we were gonna do one a year for about five years, but with this donation, and because we can order three, we got a price discount, so we can get three new Mustang uh, ice rescue suits for our ice rescue program. And believe it or not, they would be used in summer because the water, I lifeguarded on Lake Michigan, as everybody probably knows, I keep saying that, but the water was 47 degrees once, one, one day that I worked and I was in and out of it, started shaking for a half hour. We need these suits year round. So I can't thank the Walmart Corporation enough and for um, Assistant Manager Thiel for what he did, so thank you. Bill, thanks again uh, for the contribution uh, from you and uh, the company you work for at Walmart South. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Uh, that'll include items uh, 2.2 through 2.7. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, accept and file all our O's, accept and uh, adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and Second. ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Alderperson Svaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I had a question on 2.5. Is Ryan Sasma still available? I think he just left. Just left. Maybe. What was your question? Uh, my question was, uh, we, I, I, from, from what this says here is we're going to be filing, filing uh, 2.5, but I hear there's some more work that needs to be done on it. Uh, I, can anyone speak to it? Todd. Todd? Um, thank you. Uh, basically, in uh, Public Works, what we, we did was we talked about it, and I believe that Ryan had made a comment that uh, he was going to be working with Aurora on this request. Um, so I don't see a problem with us accepting and adopting it. It's just that it's not totally closed at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thank you. 
<laughs> Scott? Yes. <clears throat> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next under reports of officers, item 3.1 through 3.4 will all lie over. Items 3.5 through 3.16 uh, will also will be referred. Moving on to resolutions, item 4.1 will lie over. Items 4.2 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. And under reports of committees, item 5.1 will lie over. And item 5.2 is RC number 101 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, whom has referred RO number 104 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends that beverage operators license application number 1751 uh, Jewel uh, R. James Sr. be denied because of his record of uh, violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor under further discussion. Is Jewel James Sr. here? It doesn't appear that Mr. James is here. He did not um, come to any of our meetings, and therefore it was unanim unanimously denied. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 103 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee. Doom is referred pursuant to RO number 128 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting licensed application and recommends that beverage operators license application number 1806, uh, Cynthia Batzu. Uh, be denied based upon her record of violations related to the licensed activity, her record as a habitual law offender, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted <clears throat> and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Is um, Cheyenne Batsu here? I'm probably murdering her name, and I apologize. She did not... Um, appeared here tonight, nor did she appear at our meetings, and therefore her um, license was recommended to be denied. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 102 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 128 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various licensed applications and recommends that taxi cab drivers license application number 1780. Frederick C. McFaith be denied based upon his record of violations related to the license activity, his record as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under further discussion, please proceed. Is um, Mr. McFaith here tonight? It doesn't appear that he is here nor did he come to any of our meetings per our request, so the committee did deny his application. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
13 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 is RC number 100 of 1718 by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred RC number 60 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee and RO number 19 of 1718 by the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations and the Fire Chief submitting a report on the audit and review of the Fire Department's job descriptions, the identification of any overlapping duties and responsibilities and the recommendations resulting from the study. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and, and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes, one no. Motion passes. Um, item uh, 5.6 was originally scheduled to be up for uh, passage, uh, but I'd rather uh, see that lie over with the companion document that we uh, lied over earlier in the agenda. Next is uh, general ordinances. Item 6.1 lies over. Item 6.2 through, through, uh, through 6.5 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, item 7.1 is resolution number 56 of 1718 by Alderperson Boren and Wolf authorizing establishing an appropriation in the 2017 budget for information technology equipment. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those, uh, we have to call the roll. The clerk, please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is resolution number 60 of 1718 by Alderperson Savaglio and Lewandowski directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of the city's uh, official zoning map for property located at 2724 Kohler Memorial Drive. Alderperson Lewandowski. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, all, is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is other matters received after the agenda was published. I'll turn it over to uh, City Attorney Charles Adams. 8.1 is a resolution by all the persons Donahue and Bourne approving the option to purchase of approximately 14.5 acres of industrial parkland in the Sheboygan Business Center between Quashus Enterprises and the City of Sheboygan. That'll be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2018, and June 30, 2019. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Uh, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under exemption provided in section 13.85 sub 1 sub E. Wisconsin states where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session for the, de for the development opportunity adjacent to I-43. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session. <clears throat> Nice. Motion passes. I'd just like to alert the viewing public that uh, we'll be uh, adjourning in closed session, so this will end our broadcast for this evening. We'll take a, a short three-minute recess and reconvene shortly.